Welcome back. You're watching The Last Sip, and I'm Amara Jones. There have been a wave of first-time and progressive candidates who are running for office in 2018, but at the same time, there continues to be an era of backlash in which politics maneuvers at this particular moment. And so in order to explore some of the other cross-currents besides that of progressivism that are at work, we are joined again by Hannah Alam of BuzzFeed, who will take us through that in a way hopefully that doesn't have us pulling our hair out. Hannah, thanks again for joining us. Thank you. So, as I mentioned, um, progressivism does seem to be resurging in the United States. We just had a conversation with Ben Jealous about how he feels that in his state it's become a movement. It's not only that he's running on certain issues, but that um, it's a part of a broader change in the political level. But as we have learned from 2016, and as continues to play out in a lot of ways in 2018, we're also in an era of backlash against um, a series of rights and different groups of people. And one of those that was at work in 2016 um, was clearly um, a backlash against Muslims and Islamophobia that was in many ways a part of Donald Trump's campaign in 2016. And I'm wondering if the way in which you saw that play out in that year is similar to what you're seeing now, um, and if that ties into um, the progressive movement that we're seeing at the same time, or are these just two different poles that keep pulling back um, against each other? Sure. Well, I think that uh, Islamophobia has been around a long time, even long before 9-11, which, of course, after 9-11, there was sort of this whole industry that sprang up, a multi-million dollar industry to discredit and vilify Muslims um, at, at home and abroad. And uh, that industry was very influential on U.S. politics, especially Republican politics and definitely um, influential within the Trump campaign. Uh, what many people who watch Islamophobia and anti-Muslim hostility saw was that these groups that were once considered fringe, they would say things, you know, blanket vilifications of, of Muslims. You know, there's 1.6 billion in the world, three and a half million here in the United States. And they would make these, um, these blanket statements uh, against Muslims and groups that would, would do those things didn't have a seat at the table. What we've seen after the election is that not only do they have a seat at the table, um, many of those same figures that were once considered too fringe to be on a panel in Washington are now in, inside the White House. And, uh, and if not directly inside the White House, maybe uh, just a degree or two removed as advisors and consultants. And so that's a trend that's extremely um, worrisome to, to a lot of people, Muslims, but as, as well as others, including um, progressive politicians, other, you know, Democratic politicians, and even among some Republican politicians who, who have said, you know, um, that this has no place and that you really have to draw a distinction between uh, Islam, the religion as it's practiced, you know, around the world by 1.6 billion people and uh, extremist fringes. Mm -hmm. What is the? What do you think is the political value, or how is Islamophobia used? I guess I would say from what you've been able to observe and through your coverage. Sure. Uh, not long ago, a colleague Talal Ansari and I sat down and decided to ask the question. You know, we see these uh, anti-Muslim comments being said by a legislator here, a mayor here, a sheriff there, and we thought, what if we tallied them all up? How many states could we say has an openly Islamophobic politician, an elected official. And we found 49 out of 50 states have uh, such a person, you know, serving in office. And that, um, mm. that was, it was chilling for a lot of people to see it in, all in one place, even if you're familiar with the statements um, from, that come out from time to time. This was an aggregation of those. And it really, I must say that most of these comments had been made with impunity. So there was no political consequence um, for, for saying the kinds of things that range from, you know, sort of litmus tests on how patriotic you are before a Muslim could meet with, a, with an elected official, um, anti-Sharia legislation, um, anti-refugee remarks, the vilification of Islam, all the way up to Facebook and social media posts that were very disparaging against Islam. I would say that some even could qualify as hate speech. 
Mm-hmm. And yet, uh, and these were by and large Republicans. I think we found maybe a couple of instances of Democrats making um, sort of similar remarks, but this was clearly a trend within the GOP. And when we asked the, the GOP what it was doing about this and whether it had identified this, um, you know, they they said such political rhetoric is, such anti-Muslim rhetoric is unacceptable, um, but they stopped short of saying that they would um, take any action. And of course, it's hard to when that same rhetoric is, uh, you, you hear it coming from the highest office in the land. You hear it from the president himself and uh, his many advisors around him. So it's really hard for the party or for anyone really to tackle that kind of language and rhetoric when it's coming now from the White House. Mm-hmm. What do you think is the link between Islamophobia um, and the surge um, in heated, that's a nice term, political rhetoric against immigrants and immigration overall? Are they moving in tandem? Um, are they opposite? So the more there is um, uh, a focus on Islamophobia, uh, there's less on immigration or vice versa. What's the, in, what's the interplay here? Because my my interest here is in this idea of um, othering and, the fo- and, quote, the foreigner and the way in which that is used politically. And so is there a relationship between Islamophobia and, and the broader conversation on immigration? Oh, absolutely. They go part and parcel. I mean, for, for example, you know, in discussing American Muslims, uh, President Trump and, uh, you know, White House staff, they, they almost never, if ever, um, acknowledge that there are Muslim Americans here, you know, in many capacities. Uh, since the beginning. And since the beginning, actually, you know, even since before, you know, the United States was a country, there has mm-hmm. never been a United States without Islam present. Mm-hmm. And uh, whether it was through enslaved Africans who were brought here and some of them retained their, uh, mm-hmm. their Muslim heritage and teachings for, for many years, to uh, to today's very um, wide diversity of Muslims in the United States, it's one of the most uh, diverse faiths, and growing very rapidly among uh, Latinos, for example. Um, of course, the largest single mm-hmm. block of American Muslims are, are Black Muslims, mm-hmm. um, African Americans, as well as uh, immigrants. Mm-hmm. And so it's, but it's always sort of portrayed as the other, this this invading force, this menace from abroad. And to a lot of American Muslims, um, both immigrant background who've been here a few generations, as well as black Muslims who sometimes call themselves indigenous Muslims, um, this does not sound like a recognizable form of Islam to them. Um, they're like, no, we're, we're American and we've been here. And so the flip side to the, I suppose, you know, all the, the rise in hate crimes that even the FBI has documented against uh, Muslims or people perceived to be Muslim, against the sort of administration's attempts to marginalize Muslims um, from public office, from public life, from uh, from the country in general through the attempts at the um, so-called Muslim ban. Um, the backlash to that has been what some Muslims will call a silver lining because it, like in, as in other marginalized groups targeted by this administration, um, there's also been a real galvanizing effect where mm. um, there's an unprecedented number of Muslims running for office and they're running from uh, from school boards and county boards and uh, you know all the way up to the governor of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that is maybe the how it actually does tie into this larger wave of progressivism. That is to say, as people um, feel under pressure, it's actually encouraging uh, those that feel now marginalized by the system to get involved in greater numbers. So. Um, in addition, you know, we um, will speak with um, Deb Holland. She's a part of a wave of Native American um, men and women who are running for office for the first time. And so you're saying that the same thing is also at work in these other areas. And so there actually may be uh, a link between the backlash and what we're seeing across the board in a lot of these areas. Well, and you mentioned progressive politics. I mean, the, perhaps the one of the most watched races involving a Muslim candidate is the Michigan gubernatorial race. And that's where uh, a man named Abdul al-Sayed, um, he is a practicing Muslim. Uh, very, his family is visibly Muslim. He has a beard. His wife wears hijab. Uh, mm. They've, you know, are unashamed and unapologetic about being Muslim. And in fact, um, have had this campaign ad, you know, showing just this, 
you know, it was remarkable in that it didn't vilify Muslims. It was just showing a normal Muslim family at home. And so a lot of people mm. uh, are paying attention to his campaign. And he's definitely someone who, um, you know, describes himself in his campaign as progressive. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to help us um, kind of unpack all that and to, to see all these relationships. It's clearly where we end up on election night 2018 is going to be um, interesting. I don't think that anyone can predict it and how all of these different forces that are responding and interacting and counteracting each other are going to play out over this year, I think is going to be um, something to watch and, and as I say, is going to be a surprise. But thank you so much for your reporting. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us, not once, but twice. Um, and um, we greatly appreciate it.